how do you make a chip? I'm going to show you in 14 easy steps. I, I actually, when I first put this together, it was 12 steps, but that sounded kind of like therapy, and I didn't want people to say, ooh, I'm in therapy. So I added a couple extra steps just to make it a little more interesting. So step number one, the first thing that you do is you grow a giant crystal of sand, a giant crystal of silicon. And the way this happens is you take a huge vat, melt down the silicon till it's completely liquid. You take a little tiny bit of a crystal, it's about the size of your finger, and you put it down inside this vat of melted silicon and you turn it very, very slowly. And as it turns, all the little silicon atoms are going to stick on in a perfect crystal shape so that it builds up into an enormous crystal. And I've got a really cool one here to show you. This is only part, and it weighs a ton, by the way. <laughs> this is a silicon crystal that was pulled, just like I described, round and around and around until it got this big. Um, if you happen to see silicon that looks silvery in color, that's because special chemicals have been added to it. So this has no special chemicals in it. It is strictly uh, pure silicon. And what's amazing is that they stopped at a small point with this one. Silicon, silicon crystals these days are about this big around and maybe six feet tall. Uh, if you've ever done the experiment where you grow salt crystals or sugar crystals with your kids or if you're a kid uh, you're in your science class, that's exactly what we're doing here with this giant, giant crystal of pure silicon. That's step one. The next thing you do is to take that big crystal, polish it down into a perfect cylinder so it's completely round going up and down, and then you slice it very, very thin into what we call wafers. And then you polish them, shiny, shiny. So let me show you. Here's a small silicon wafer. You can see how shiny it is on that side. It's not shiny at all on this side. So this used to be part of a silicon crystal. So imagine, you know, they made it perfectly round and then sliced these, t these guys really, really thin. Um, they're like glass. So <laughs> I was doing this class one day at my company for our finance department. And I told everybody, I said, be careful with these because they're very fragile. They're like glass, they'll cut you if they break. And one guy, kind of absentmindedly, he's flicking the, the wafer like this. And all of his friends are looking at him like, dude, <laughs> she just said, watch out. And of course, after a while, the whole thing shattered all over the desk. And they were laughing their heads off at him. So be careful, they shatter very, very easily because they really are glass. So this is very small, this is old technology. We don't make wafers this size anymore. Instead, we've gotten bigger because if you get bigger, you can put more chips on the wafer. So this wafer is eight inches wide and guess what, this is pretty old technology as well. But you can see it's perfectly round, uh, nice polish on it. Um, I, I like to tell people that these are great, engineers put them in their office and they pretend they're wafers but they're really, you know, like, to comb their hair, so they're primping. <laughs> There's a wafer, um, and it's, again, polished very, very smooth. Let me put this down. I don't want to break this. I, that would be so embarrassing, right, after I give my own lecture and then break my own wafer. Okay, it's safe. The next thing you do is to coat that wafer with a photographic material. It's like Polaroid film. It's a, it's a chemical that when you put it on top of the wafer, when light shines on it, that chemical gets really, really hard. And that's the secret to what we're about to do um, in order to uh, put the transistors and the resistors and the capacitors on that wafer. So you take the wafer again and coat it with that, with that uh, special chemical.